On September 11, 2001, Al-Qaeda terrorists hijacked four American jetliners, crashing two into the World Trade Center in New York City, one into the Pentagon, and one into a Pennsylvania field. A total of 2,997 people were killed. Then U.S. President George W. Bush was quick to respond. I can hear you! I can hear you, the rest of the world hears you, and the people... Bush ordered the bombing of al-Qaeda training facilities in Afghanistan, and a combination of U.S. air power and Afghan tribal alliances ousted the Taliban regime within weeks. Kabul residents danced in the streets and men shaved off their beards, which were then required by the Taliban. Bush decided to invade Iraq and to widen the mission in Afghanistan, seeking to rebuild the country in the model of an American-style democracy. U.S. troops and aid workers helped rebuild Afghanistan, focusing on empowering girls and women who were not allowed to attend school or work outside the home under Taliban rule. But the Taliban quickly regrouped and began their years of armed resistance, including suicide attacks on Afghan civilians. Some experts say the unclear U.S. goals from the start in Afghanistan may have been the original sin in America's 20-year involvement. President Bush at the time felt uh, compelled to leave Afghanistan better than he found it, and while he certainly wouldn't call it nation-building, was willing to engage in some degree of that in order to, to try and, again, make Afghanistan a better place than it was before. But his Secretary of Defense, Don Rumsfeld, absolutely wanted to just get the U.S. military out of Afghanistan as quickly as he possibly could. And that tension uh, really had a lot of deleterious effects early on in the U.S. presence in Afghanistan that arguably the U.S. Uh, mission there never recovered from. In 2009, then-President Barack Obama surged troops and contractors into the country in his first term, pushing the U.S. presence to more than 100,000 before announcing a drawdown years later that left a force of about one-tenth of that size. For many of you, this will be your last tour in Afghanistan. Obama's successor, former President Donald Trump, vowed to bring U.S. troops home from forever wars and had his top officials sign a peace deal with the Taliban in February 2020 to withdraw U.S. troops in 14 months. But after Bush, Obama, and Trump presided over the war, it is current U.S. President Joe Biden who is ending U.S. involvement. Defending the chaotic U.S. departure this week, Biden said the U.S. accomplished its goals in Afghanistan many years ago when it pushed the Taliban from power and killed al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden in Pakistan. Our mission in Afghanistan was never supposed to have been nation-building. It was never supposed to be creating a unified, centralized democracy. Our only vital national interest in Afghanistan remains today what it has always been, preventing a terrorist attack on America's homeland. But for Afghans, both at home and abroad, emotions are raw after the rapid Taliban takeover of the country and amid images of Americans and other foreigners fleeing Kabul. Norak Nasimi is the founder of a charitable organization that helps Afghan refugees in London. You have to understand that building a nation, building a democracy is not a, a, a motto of time for 20 years. This is a long-term, yes, a long-term solution, long, a long-term, uh, there, there is a long-term commitment should be made by the U.S. and the international community. Afghanistan just uh, have the opportunity of the NATO interven and the intervention in 2001. But 20 years is not enough 
to build a better future for the people. Professor Samar Ali tells VOA how Afghans view America over the long term depends on what happens next. I think that the past week and the past several days have been incredibly damaging. Um, I think that there, the trust has eroded between us um, in very serious ways. And one of the things that we must immediately do is cut the red tape around accepting Afghan refugees. The rapid collapse of the U.S. mission in Afghanistan is likely to force Washington to think long and hard about sending troops abroad in the future, says Ian Bremmer of the Eurasia Group. The legacy of the past 20 years uh, will be a United States that is much, much, much more reluctant to engage in military-led nation-building exercises anywhere around the world. Other experts say they see a short-term blow to U.S. credibility after troops leave Afghanistan, but add it is too soon to know whether there will be lasting damage to critical U.S. alliances. Cindy Sane, VOA News.